Skip, what's your reaction to that? Stephen A, obviously on my side, this is nothing personal against Damian Lillard. We've had him on the show a couple times. Nice young man. He is humble. He doesn't speak highly of himself when he's on camera. But I stand by what I said last week after game two at Golden State about Damian Lillard. I believe Portland should be up two games to one with game four tonight in Portland. They're not because Damian Lillard, and we know he can score in big bunches. He was not there when his team needed him most in the fourth quarter of game two back at Golden State, which prompted my, my comments of the next day. Obviously, on any given night, Damian Lillard can go Steph on Steph's team. He's had explosions against Golden State during the regular season. He had 51, he had a 40-point game, he had a 38-point game. He had 40 on Saturday. But it's almost like indicting him further as to what I criticized him for. Because in game two's fourth quarter, if I may refer to his very popular and terrific commercial, he wasn't dropping dimes, dropping dimes. He wasn't dropping threes. He wasn't dropping anything but the figurative ball when his team needed him most. He had scored 25 through three quarters of game two, again, against the Stephless Golden State Warriors at Golden State. In the fourth quarter of that game, Damian Lillard went 0 for 3, 0 for 2 from 3. He had one assist in the fourth quarter, and he had one rebound. I don't get it. Damien, I watch that game. You're right about this, because we're on the East Coast. I don't get to see the finishes of all the Portland games when they're playing at home or on the West Coast. It's just too hard on us, at least on me. Got to get up at 5 Eastern time. But I saw the end of game two, and I saw the end of a whole lot of games this year, and there, there was a reason that Damian Lillard didn't make the All-Star team this year, which was pretty shocking. He can be wildly inconsistent. He can explode on people on any given night, and then there'll be a, a random night when you'll say, gee, where were you? Stephen A. Smith made a great point in his defense the other day. You, you said, hey, he's just not big enough. What, what is, do we call him 6'2"? Is that what we give him? Yeah. About 6'2". Yep. Now, Steph's only 6'3", but Steph is about as special as we have ever seen at six feet three inches tall. He is the most special I've ever seen. But at 6'2", there are nights when Damian is, is limited in what he can do. And some nights, he's just not there when really needed. I thought without Steph on the floor in game two, remember, they were up 11 going to the fourth quarter that night. Up 11 at Golden State, they should have closed that deal because their best player, Damian Lillard, should have closed that deal. They lost that game by 11. That was just wrong, and I couldn't help it. I, I just react to what I see. And the next day, I told you on the show, I couldn't see Damian Lillard down the stretch of the fourth quarter of game two at Oakland. A couple of things. Before I get into the Damian Lillard comment, let me say something that um, I've never said on this show before. I mean, some of these reporters, uh, they should be ashamed of themselves. And the reason why is because First Take is not the only show that debates what we see. And, you know, they pick and choose when they want to bring up somebody's name because you've got reporters trying to make other reporters into newsworthy figures. Uh, yeah, we're personalities, I guess. This is what we do, and we express our opinion. Last time I checked, that's how the industry uh, has, has transformed to some degree. And so if you're quoting Charles Barkley, who's a Hall of Famer and all-time 50 greatest player, all of that other stuff, that would be different. Uh, but to sit up there and, and quote uh, Skip Bayless, it was clear that, 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 that somebody was looking for a little something incendiary. Um, I don't knock Damian Lillard for that because you, you have every right to come to the defense of yourself no matter who you are. But it just amazes me how we have folks w uh, as members of the fourth estate who are supposed to be about the business uh, of reporting on a sport and instead try to make reporters, their contemporaries, actual news. I want to be on the record by saying I think it's as weak as it gets. And the reason why is because when I was a reporter, Skip, when you were a reporter, when I was a beat writer covering colleges and then pro sports, I'm sorry, my obligation was to report on the teams and the universities that I had to cover. It wasn't to sit up there and take the easy way out by trying to act like I'm doing something newsworthy by making reporters news. Now let me get to the issue at hand as it pertains to Damian Lillard. Damian Lillard can ball. 
I like him a lot. He's got a lot of moxie, a lot of guts. He can ball. He averaged 25 and, and 7 this year. Uh, only shot 41% from the field, 37% from three-point range. But the brother can ball, Skip. He's not an all-star, but it's not an indictment against him because he's got all-star caliber talent. The problem is so does Chris Paul. So does Steph Curry. So does Russell Westbrook. And there's but so many people at his position that you're allowed to pick. So really he's a product or he's – Somebody who's suffering from the fact that his position is loaded with greatness. He has that ability. He's just not as consistent as those other guys are in terms of their contribution. But when you look at him, think about what he has done this year for the Portland Trailblazers. When LaMarcus Aldridge and everybody departed from this team, what did we think? We thought they were going to be destined for the lottery. And while Terry Stotts deserves an, a boatload of credit for the exceptional job he did coaching this team, we can't get away from the fact that it's been about Damian Lillard and to a lesser degree C.J. McCollum, you know, the reigning most improved player in the game. You know, you've got Plumlee and Crab and Aminu. These guys can play. Don't get me wrong. They're not scrubs. But they ain't somebody to write home about either. This is about Damian Lillard. This is his team. Okay? And so when you look at it and you look at the fact that he's, folk, he's the vocal point and you look at the fact that he's so undersized and you look at the absence of, of, of expectation because of LaMarcus Aldridge, you know, parting ways and what have you, to see what he did this year, dropping 51 on Golden State, dropping 50 on Toronto, doing the things that he's done throughout this season, especially showing up in big moments. It was a big moment the other night when you're down 2-0 and you need your star who's struggling in games one and two to show up. And his brother shows up on a court and drops 40 on you. I mean, that's a big, big deal. And so when I look at it from that perspective, again, I get where you're coming from. And I can't sit up here and summarily dismiss what you're saying as if you're wrong. Nobody should, Skip, because you point to the numbers and you point to the facts based on what you see. What I'm saying is I'm going to take it in context. Look at the, the arduous circumstances he has to face night in and night out, being who he is with the game that he has, with limited help around him, and still doing what he did in the Western Conference, okay? Still doing what he did this year. I give credit where credit is due. So again, to me, the only thing that he said that might have come across as a, as, as a bit incendiary was questioning whether or not you're watching the games, and I didn't think that was that big of a deal, Skip, because as you pointed out, being on the East Coast, we don't get to sit there and see all the West Coast games into the wee hours of the night, and we damn sure ain't going to make an exceptional effort for Portland. But in the end, I have no problem with Damian Lillard coming to his own defense because he has every right to do it because he has a game that backs it up. As inconsistent as he may be at times, the fact is at least he has that greatness in him to explode at a particular moment because most guys in the league don't have that. Final point of order to your initial point. I'm pretty sure Damian was forced to respond to a question Right. About yeah, me. Of course. So That's he what didn't I'm volunteer it. He didn't exactly. he didn't open up saying. the session by saying, I got something for Skip here. No. Nope. Exactly. No. Okay, so just That's for exactly the record. What, what, yeah. okay. That's why I pointed out the stuff about the people who asked him that question, because they're trying to turn you into the news instead of letting his game speak for him. And it's pathetic because it's a weak way to get it's a weak way to get around the fact yep. that you know what, why don't you go out there and break some news stories? Why don't you do that? <laughs> Well, I think Damien's going to be the news again tonight because I think he'll explode. And by explode. the way, Skip, and by the way, I can say that because far be it for me to brag, but I've broken more than my share of stories in my career, so I can say such a thing to that report, whoever the hell it was. Yes, Go out there have. and break some news instead of trying to make your contemporaries news. All Let's right. move on. Skip, we appreciate your response. I'm very excited for this next subject. Conor McGregor tweeted this on his Twitter page. Take a look. Could Floyd come out of retirement to fight an MMA fighter? We will discuss that next. Stay here.